Hello, everybody, and welcome to Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. I am this program's co-host. I'm Soto Brown. I'm the Bishop Museum Historian here in Oahu. And joining us all the way from Germany is the program's host, Martin Despang. And Martin is currently in Germany, but he'll be returning back to Honolulu very soon. And good afternoon to you, Martin, or should I say good morning, because it's morning for you while it's afternoon here. Hey, DeSoto and everyone. <laughs> and Martin took this picture that's behind us while driving around in Bavaria in Germany. And the crazy thing is that while it's in this typical Alpine setting with the Alpine buildings and the flower boxes and all of that stuff, right in the middle of the picture, you see something very unusual. That's not unusual for Germany to see a Volkswagen van or a T2 as they call it. But what's on it's very unusual because it's got two Hawaiian hibiscus flowers as well as a shaka sign on the driver's side door. And it just shows you how crazy the German people are because they love Hawaiian stuff. Do they not, Martin? That's how we are. And yes, that's what we do. And even it even spells out uh, above the sign. It even spells out hang loose. That's right. So. That's well, the lure of Hawaii half that, around the world. That is, that is. And we're going to be seeing some other things that are similar to us here in Honolulu as we continue our journey. But we're going to be looking mostly at Europe today. And I think it's time for us to go to our first slide. And Martin is tell, had told me that in the upper corner of this picture, you're going to see, first of all, the train system. And of course, there are train systems throughout Europe uh, that are very highly developed throughout a lot of other parts of the world unlike here in the United States, although we are building our own trace here. And one of the things that's happening here in Honolulu that we're going to see is development around the train station. And in the upper picture, you see a picture in Munich in which the train system there has got buildings right up next to it that have been built there. Uh, but we're, today we're going to be taking a journey from Munich to Zurich, Switzerland. You can see the map that we're going to be looking at here. And we're not going to go on a train because actually the bus system functions even better for this trip, Martin has informed me. So you go on a comfortable double-deck bus, and when you buy your ticket, if you look in the lower right corner of the picture, you see that the bus company is telling you that you're paying an extra carbon tax fee, which is part of your, part of your uh, transportation cost, and that purportedly is going to alleviate carbon tax, or alleviate carbon footprint, and that Martin told me that this is a very economical way to do it for a group of four people. It only costs, what was it, Martin? $100, $90, $80? Fifth less, half of that, 50, 50. bucks, which That's is right. hilarious. That's which right. Which is hilarious, yeah. Right. So it's a little, it's a little ironic, this soda, because on the left, as you said, you know, this is a transit oriented development station, as you said with um, residential high rises along it. And that's how people commute short distance from the outskirts to the city where they work. But then from Munich to Zurich, it's hard or at least not economical, very attractive to go by train. So, um, you know, the buses have pretty much taken over. And so um, let's, let's go on that little trip here. And again, we, we go to a place that uh, a couple shows ago at the very top right, Joey and Clara on their uh, cross-cultural culinary conveying voyage have been driving through. And that's a little city uh, called Esslingen in the outskirts um, of Zurich. So we want to take you there. So let's jump to the next slide and see what we have. And what we can learn from Zurich, who has done this transit-oriented development um, a longer time ago already. So, uh, well, what we see here are the, are the transportation right. modes that we have here on Oahu. And in the upper right corner, you can see our very familiar bus system. We only have one electric bus. The rest of them are diesel. And so they are not as environmentally friendly as they could be. But we did once have a number of different train systems here in the Hawaiian Islands, and we had the Oahu Railway, which ran from downtown Honolulu all the way up along the coastline to Kahuku. And there were train systems on the other island as well. That one that you see on the bottom is uh, one that was used to be on the big island of Hawaii in the 1800s. We've lost all of those, and we now rely pretty much on motor vehicles to get us around. Next picture. And we're going to Zurich. 
Zurich, Switzerland. Zurich is located in a, in a physical setting that's not dissimilar to that of Honolulu because it is between two mountain ranges. And if you look in the picture on the left, that is Lake Zurich. And the city of Zurich is at the very bottom in the lower left corner as you look at it here. Well, it's between the two mountain ranges and it faces onto a body of water. And in the caricatures that we see on the right, the city of Honolulu is also bound by the mountains on one side and the ocean on the other side. So both of them have to be confined physically within a geographical space. How does Zurich deal with that? Well, let's go to our next picture. And we yeah, can while we see do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Mark. Yeah, I think there, there, there's two, our cosmopolitan tourist experts, Suzanne, um, did a little homework for us as far as numbers. And there's two other striking similarities because people might say, hey, compare Zurich to Honolulu, where's the point? That's at the opposite ends of the world. And one is a temperate climate and the other one is a tropical climate. But there's two striking similarities that that's the size of the city. They're almost, if you just look at the urban metropolitan uh, area, both uh, host um, uh, half a million people. And if you look at tourist numbers, they also match the number of, they're, they're attracting 6 million uh, visitors a year. If you're just looking at the city or in fact at the island of Oahu, but you know, most of the lodging is actually in Honolulu. So striking similarities that you wouldn't expect, right, the solo? Absolutely. But something else Martin pointed out to me, which is really telling, is that in Europe in general, prices are a good deal higher than what we're here in the United States, even in Hawaii, which is much higher than much of the country. And if you look at the price list in the upper left corner, which is of a drink list from a, a restaurant menu, the thing at the very bottom, Zuri Wasser, is just faucet water in the town of Zurich, in the city of Zurich. And to order it in this restaurant, one glass of water coming out of the faucet is three euros, and to get a refill is one euro, whereas we here expect free water when we go into a restaurant. So this is a, a very significant price difference that we're gonna run into in a little bit, but if you look in the picture below that, there's the carafe of the water that costs so much money. In the upper right corner, you see the diagram of how we get our water. The water comes from the sky, it falls as rain, it permeates through many layers of lava rock, and we end up with this very pure, very filtered water that we are accustomed to, for which we pay comparatively little in comparison. And Martin, what's the picture in the lower right about? With We've got a building with a lot of, um, looks like rental bicycles in front of it. Yeah, well, just after all, we're an architecture show, so it gives you an idea about how architecture has to be in a temperate climate. It gets very, very cold. and. In winter, we're going to get there in a minute. And so architecture wears like a puffy coat and with down in between. This is a double facade. And so that, that tells you kind of what effort you have to go through that we, we don't have to do in, in Honolulu. Going back to the water, uh, the water more specifically comes actually from the lake. So that lake is very clean as the groundwater, for the reasons you explained in the diagram shows at the very top right, is in Honolulu, and we give it for free. So again, we're make, we're giving suggestions. We're not saying you should charge necessarily for drinking water like the Swiss do, but again, maybe a little bit more awareness of the precious resources that we have that are so fresh and pure. You know, there are these absurdities. There's the French uh, table water, Volvic, that even the name says that it comes from volcanic, uh, it's filtered through volcanic stones somewhere there in France, and we import that. And, you know, we got that all on the island, so I think we should brand and, and appreciate us a little bit better than we already, than we do right now. Okay, let's move on and go to that, do a little train ride. And this and, uh, is, this is a very interesting comparison that Mark came up with. He's pointing out that here in Honolulu, we don't have it. A lot of outdoor seating for restaurants and bars and we do see one example of what we do have in front of the Waikiki Circle Hotel in Waikiki at the top but at the bottom here's a picture in Zurich and it's in the winter or maybe early spring it's freezing cold and yet people are sitting outside to have dinner or to have some kind of a meal 
And as Martin just said, we don't appreciate what we have because it's so, we're so accustomed to it. If you go away from it, you go to other places, you have much better an appreciation of how lucky we are. Yeah, and appreciation down there, the gentleman at the very bottom left is Ali, who's a dear friend of Suzanne and ours. And so this was on one of the many trips we, we actually did to their place. And so they, thanks for that. And, and Ali took me there. And again, you know, we were, that was in March somehow, and it wasn't below freezing anymore. And once it's a couple degrees above the freezing point, people want to get out. And as we said, in Honolulu, unfortunately, people want to get to the freezing cold inside, which is fossil fuel AC, which is sort of wrong, right? Right. So as you said, appreciate it more. Right. Let's move on. Next slide. Well, something else that you see in Zurich, as you do see in Honolulu, is the show of wealth. And we do see exotic, expensive cars like these Lamborghinis, both in Zurich and here in Honolulu. Mostly we see, the, the main example we see is the Ferrari that gets used in the TV show um, Hawaii 5, not Hawaii 5, oh, Magnum PI, the reboot of Magnum PI. And that's what we see in the upper right-hand corner. That's a famous red car. Um, but both of these situations, we see the ostentatious display of wealth both places have it. Well, they give us an indication about the affordability or the lack of it in, in both cities as far as dwelling space, right, and housing right. space. Let's move on to the next slide. So here, we're seeing, again, examples of two types of transportation. Honolulu today just has the buses that you see in the upper left corner. We once did have a system of electric streetcars. This was uh, one in particular that was a very early one, the earliest one. We also did have electric buses, and that's what you see in the picture below. This, of course, is in Zurich. Uh, these are buses. They run on rubber tires. They are not on track, but they still get electricity from the wires overhead. We had buses like that for about 20 years, from 1937 to 1957, but we've dropped all of those now. We don't have an electric system anymore except we will be getting one when our new one comes to us uh, starting next year, in fact. Mm -hmm. Better get back to that fast, right? Right. So let's move on here, next image. So as we just showed you, uh, Zurich, the city of Zurich, is located on Lake Zurich, and they use the lake for transportation as well. We formerly have had attempts at transportation using water. We had the super ferry. It was supposed to go into our island that didn't last very long. We've also had ferries that have gone from, say, Eva to downtown Honolulu. None of them has ever been successful. But in Zurich, there are different types of boats. There are sightseeing boats. And then there's also a ferry that we see in the upper left-hand corner. And I can see that that one looks like it carries vehicles too, doesn't it, Martin? That's true. And that's the one that Ollie has to take because he works on the other side of the shore of the lake. So he can't or it's, it's not you know, possible for him to take the train that we're going to hop in a minute here. So he has to take that ferry, and it works well for him. But again, we are make people think, you know, why don't we use water as a means of transportation for our you know, severe traffic projects right. and problems, in fact, in Honolulu. And again, it's something, as you said, that we once had, and maybe we should reconsider. Right. So let's move on. Next photograph. We also see here uh, in the upper left-hand corner, again, there's our little streetcar that used to be on Pacific Heights. But there also are other types of transportation like this. There are aerial tramways. And Martin, you said that that used to function, those two pictures that we see in the next, uh, the middle there. There used to be an aerial tramway like that in Zurich. Is that right? Yeah, the, the top right one is one of a historic one, so it went over the lake, and the one next to it is a proposal to sort of reanimate that. And at the bottom, we can see these more funky streetcars that sort of, you know, have a, a track or a, a rope that pulls it up the hill. That's a more urban situation. Both are, you know, very, you know, scenic and sort of, um, you know, cute to uh, kind of artifacts of, of technological transportation history. And again, uh, think that Kauai board member Nicole Hori at the very top right is opting to use that technology and that system to pretty much 
uh, where the, our, our train system will most likely end at Ella Moana connected to my workplace to up at QH Manoa. And it's, it's a very interesting proposal because the, the cost efficiency of that system is, is different and the rail is, is very, very well because you only need a pole every now and then and just cables in between. So, yeah. so that's something again to, to look back into and people are in fact, as you right. call so let's okay. move on to the next slide. So we see in the picture on the left, we see the streetcar system in Zurich, and we see one of the stations. This is kind of an interesting amoeba triangular shaped system, uh, structure there that's a streetcar, kind of where the streetcar systems come together. And in the upper right, we see an old drawing of what the streetcars used to look like when they were going into Waikiki raised on the tracks, raised on pilings over the swamp that used to be there, as well as the Alawai Canal later on. And as Martin pointed out, it's a totally easy breezy car because it's completely open on both sides. Well, whether we attain that or not, we, it's, it's something to consider because again, we don't have to air condition necessarily all the time. We certainly don't have to heat the way they do in Switzerland, but could we have more open cars? It would be nice if we did. Yeah, and as the, the combination of pictures shows, you know, public transportation and its architecture could be sexy, can be sexy, can be attractive, can be appealing, so people would, would love to take it and, and get a kick out of it, versus sitting in your individual, you know, closed up air conditioned car, which really doesn't make you feel the place as much as you do when you ride, especially this sort of open, easy, breezy public transportation. So another thing that we consider, because the cars, you know, we, we buy both for the buses and, and the rail, they're like these invasive and closed ones AC, and that's really sort of the downer. So right. let's move on to the next one. So this is the main station that we're gonna get into for our trip that we're gonna take very shortly in Zurich along the lake. In the upper right corner, we see, as Martin pointed out, transit stations tend to have a lot of people coming and going. There's activity near them. And in the picture at the upper right, you see the, uh, what we used to be called Pier 7 at Honolulu Harbor with the streetcar right there with a lot of people either getting on or getting off a ship. And there are horse-drawn vehicles as well as probably some automobiles mixed into that. And in the upper left, we see just a reference to the fact that Amsterdam is the most bicycle-friendly city in Europe. But right below that, we see here in Zurich, right in front of the train station, the different modes of transportation are visible. And look at this huge mass of bicycles because that's something that is used a great deal there, even though the weather is cold and sometimes unpleasant. Exactly. So let's go inside that station real quick, go to the next slide. Yep. This is uh, in the upper right corner, you see the architect who designed this station, whose name I do not remember, unfortunately at the moment, but Martin will tell us. And there's been discussion about, oh, what is his name? It's Santiago Calatrava, and he's one of the examples that were shocking my profession with. That sometimes the engineers are the better architects. So he's the most uh, exuberant example of that because he's trained as an engineer and retrained himself as an architect, and he's very famous and well known. And this is one of his very first projects. I think it's from the late 80s, a time that I and Tropic here Rockwood don't like to recall because it's the peak of postmodernism. And within that one, he did it up in, in a very sort of um, tectonic way, sort of very skeletal. It reminded you of Art Nouveau, which is, yes. which is true. That's his tradition. Yes. He is uh, currently there. They're thinking about adding on to this train station or redoing it. And he claims his copyright, as he perfectly said, you know, in, in Europe, we have more than in the United States that he has, and you know, he should be asked first. And one of the things he's uh, sort of asking people to do is to finish something that he already proposed for the initial phase, which we see at the bottom left. You see also how engaging the architecture is because you can see a kid here climbing, you know, the architecture. And being also, he suggested that vegetation is climbing these bones, these structural bones. So that's something we continuously opt to, to do in Honolulu too, where yeah. everything grows all the time, 12 months of the year versus here, a couple of months only. Right. So let's go, keep on going, next slide here. 
And I was told that I have to read this uh, caption on this picture, which says, the lake view is for the privileged. The lake view in Zurich is for the privileged. And usually that would mean for people who have expensive homes that could look out over the lake. But in this case, it's kind of a joke because it's saying that when you get on this train, you get even a better view of the lake than the people who live, the rich people who live in the houses right next to the lake. And this is the train, this is the train trip we're about to take along the lake to go up to almost, let's say, a suburban area or uh, smaller towns near Zurich. And it's a little ironic because I put in the, the tickets on the ride and while, you know, as we said, going from Munich to Zurich with a bus takes you about five hours, costs 50 bucks only. This train ride for the four of us, uh, like 17 station going out to the little outskirts or burbs, uh, costs a total of 80, you know, euros or, you know, dollars, the equivalent. Of course, in Swiss currency because they insist they have their own and not be part of the European Union as they always have been very special. And that sort of makes it sort of, you know, you got to be privileged to ride the train, although you used a nice term, the comma Ina rate, because then we were saying, how do people get around? And uh, Suzanne was saying uh, the Swiss are very sort of, uh, more, um, you know, um, public transport oriented, and they get a, a heavy subsidization for that ticket. So it's, it's comma Ina friendly and not so much tourist friendly. Right. They want to stay amongst themselves, the Swiss. <laughs> so let's keep on going here. We got to go a little faster. Let's do the train right now. So this is we want to point out, you know, what happens along the rail and along the stations. This is a train museum here that's very interesting and appealing. Uh, next slide. We're gonna we're gonna see a couple of typologies that we already know, and I've been throwing in at the very top mostly uh, examples from my post-occupancy evaluation of what we have done, uh, all the sort of profane uh, typologies that we need. And this is a grocery store here. So um, at the bottom, you can see cargo steel, shipping containers stacked, and a scaffolding around it that, in fact, again, like Calatrava suggests, is supposed to be overgrown with lines. Uh, ours at the top left, I found looks in a similar condition. In the next slide, I'm, I will show you how it looked uh, initially. So I'll move on to the next slide because it had a uh, facade out of a, a perforated screen, a PVC uh, perforated screen. And screens is what we were talking about in the show about that is a very efficient and effective way to keep the sun out all the time. There's a reference at the top right of the show. And the membrane we have been using, and that's unfortunately gone now, as we saw in the previous slide here, we see an office, a little office building uh, along the tracks here at the station is covered with that. Um, climatically, you know, you're blocking out the sun for the winter, so you don't get passive solar, but in fact, you get nice shading device for the summer. And, and what you can already see there is there's nice little, you know, jewels of architecture that are high architecture. This isn't this isn't churches or banks, but it's just simple buildings along the activities and events of people that, that you need along the line. You need grocery, you need food, and you need maybe office space, and you certainly might want to maybe dwell along that. That's one of the ideas to have you know, robust urban fabrics uh, around the station. So let's move on to the next and see what we all have on this line here. Um, so this is a utility station, very profane building, but using this sort of nice translucent material and that reminded me of a, of a light rail station we did that you see at the top left. And as you said, DeSoto, there's always sort of the combination of uh, multi-modes. There's bicycling here along the train tracks. Next slide. So there's a, there's a station here with a bench that reminded me of the project again, zooming in at the top right that we're talking about that we're opting for not having these stupid dividers that's supposed to keep homeless from sitting on the benches, but have a full bench and you can see how it pays off, how that station is, is you know, very vividly populated and, and being enjoyed by the travelers. Next slide. 
And uh, you have you have dwellings right next to the train station here, uh, and it has the uh, vertical guardrails, uh, metal, uh, open, breathable, as we suggest for the buildings to be built in Honolulu, as the, our Primitiva projects up there. Move to the next slide. And we've also been talking about, you know, you probably will have, you know, cars for a little longer, not as we were dreaming at the top right in the, hopefully sometimes in the future, as I'm dreaming where there are no cars anymore and everything is public transportation, you can use the former parking garages to house the homeless, but until then you have to put the cars somewhere. And as we did at the treetop uh, apartment building at the top left, at the bottom does it in the same way. There's a, there's a full uh, uh, underground parking there. And this is the entry canopy for that. You can see there's no typology too profane for the Swiss or the Zurich people here to give it good architecture. And that's certainly something we would recommend to do at the hard stations as well, right, DeSoto? Yes, absolutely. That's, that's our dream, we can see. Move on to the next, yeah. We will, we're fueling that dream here. And, you know, there will be stations, the more you go out west, past couple A, there, is, there are stations where there's little to nothing around it. And this is at the top right is an unbuilt proposal we did for a similar situation uh, in Germany. Again, it's a platform uh, that's more on grade. And here the, the platform is made of a ribbon of, uh, of wood. Um, and basalt stripes. So again, there, as we said, there should be no typology, should be too, too profane to, to make it really architecturally appealing. Next slide. And there's, there's, there's rural stuff out there, you know, in both places. And we're urging to evolve the tradition of the vernacular, not to uh, sort of Know, mummify it, but to vividly uh, evolve it and let it let it grow. And so we're at the top right. We're talking about evolving the all um, uh, Hawaiian uh, type of the of the holly, uh, the pitch roof holly, and to to move that to the next stage when you have to build you know low because not in not all places you will build high at the very beginning. You will start low, and then you should you know evolve a tradition and not basically get stuck in it. Next slide. Yeah, Martin, we have come, unfortunately, to the end of our time for today. Um, so we can go wow, on one more this slide. this has never happened to it, us before. I know, it went so <laughs> fast because we had so much to talk about. Well, and this is the actually the end of the line for the train trip that you just took uh, next to Lake Zurich. And you pointed out that this rather grand station only serves a very small community of about 1,700 people. But it was built mm -hmm. this size with the concept that the community will grow around it. And we know yeah. that, that is going to be happening with our train system as well. Yeah. Because some of the stations, as you said, currently are kind of in the middle of nowhere. But we're going to see that Honolulu and the urbanity or the urban part of Honolulu will gradually reach out to them as well. So that's going to be a mm -hmm. major factor in the growth of Honolulu in the future. And, and, and maybe, maybe while we... Phase out, Haley can just please uh, rush through the last images, just one after the other one, so we Okay, fast, yeah, Haley, can we, can we just quickly them. go through all of them until we get to the very exactly. last one? Exactly. And so we're seeing because other we see things. other typologies, we see other typologies that we need. We saw a grocery store, we saw a kindergarten, we see sort of three to four story housing here, we see uh, sort of old building stock from the 60s that you need to rejuvenate, you see new stuff. And, and here, the second to last one, you just saw our hosts. So we want to thank Uli and Cordy and their kids to have hosted us and given us the chance to see what you can do along transit-oriented development. And we can go back to the very last slide, please. It reminds us of, you know, that there are other places. Can we, yeah, that one. There are other places uh, that have rainbows. This is on the way back, on the, the bus ride back. We see there's, we drove by waterfalls. We had a spectacular rainbow, and these are things we think, you know, maybe we have in Hawaii, we're the only ones who are having that in Hawaii, but there are other places in the world who have that as well. So I think we got to try a little harder 
to get our built environment up to pace to our so beautiful, stunning natural environment. And that would be our plédoyer to try really hard to do the best architecture in the world and our very special, one of the best places in the world we have in Hawaii, right? So. The, Absolutely. So that brings us to the end of this week's uh, Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. Keep joining us for more episodes of this show. And until next time, thank you all for joining us. Aloha. 